Hey folks, my name is Promise, and welcome to Solium Infernum, the strategy game from hell. We took a look at this game a few months ago, and now I am back to offer you a world first look at some of the single player action that will be available when the game releases. Though before we get started, I do want to say, I think this might be one of the most exciting strategy games of 2024 for me. I actually just finished recording a multiplayer session, which I will show you guys in a few days when the game does release. But yeah, even playing that, I can tell you, this game is brilliant in so many ways. This is true, authentic strategy on several different levels. And I can't wait to show it off for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this game as much as I do. So let's get started with our single player. Now, what I've been authorized to show you today is one of several chronicles in the game, challenging scenarios that are based on each of the different arch fiends and their rise to power in hell. And there are quite a few very colorful uh, characters that you can choose from, each of them being very unique and quite challenging in their own right. What I'm going to show you today is going to be the story of Lilith, the mother of all hell, and her scenario is called Her Dark Star. I'm going into this semi-blind, but it looks like we have some special objectives in this scenario. We need to win via election, which means we need the most prestige in the game, while also possessing the Goblet of the Traitor, Devourer Statuettes, and a Puzzle Cube, and destroy the Tower of Pride. Ooh, this sounds fun. Erzabet proves resistant to your auguries, my lady. We know the Veiled has something you want. They all do. Prophecy is slow, but inevitable. Divine their secrets, reclaim your property, and topple that ridiculous tower of pride while you're at it. My lady has always hated that thing. So each of the different Archfiends in Hell have different strengths and weaknesses that you will employ if you are playing with them. We already saw in a previous video the Dragon Knight, who's a bit of a brute, and uses his armies and destruction spells to conquer wide swaths of Hell. But with Lilith, things are going to be a bit more subtle. She uses the more nuanced magics of this realm, relying on prophecy to reveal the secrets and the weaknesses of her opponents so she knows exactly when to exploit them with her dark rituals. By the way, is the Tower of Pride based on Babel? Because it sure looks like that's the case. That's fun. Anyway, let the games begin. Now, if you have never seen this before, I strongly recommend you go and watch the video I made for Solium Infernum back in October, because that was a very good primer as to how this game is going to work and all the different options available to you. What you really need to know, though, is that we are in a contest to rule hell now that his dark majesty has vanished. The conclave located in the capital city of Pandemonium is going to be electing a new ruler, and that is where the prestige comes into play, whoever has the most at the end of the game is going to win. We are competing against other Archfiends like Andromalius, Murmur, Urzabet, and Belial right now. To do this, we can submit up to two orders per turn. We actually can do more than that, but for right now, two is all we're going to have available to us. And some of those orders are fairly obvious, like let's say, move an army two tiles in this direction. There we go. That is one of our two actions we can take. Others would allow us to develop the power of our Archfiend, or conduct dark rituals, or go shopping in the bazaar and hire a Praetor for our army, or buy an artifact, and so on. All of these things are going to be actions and they're very precious. In this game, you need to be extremely thoughtful and deliberate about everything you do. And if you do not, you are certain to lose the game as the other Archfiends scheme and plot and backstab their way to victory. Now, knowing that we are going to be needing prestige, I want to go after this unholy fountain early on. This is a place of power, one of several different areas that can get us prestige generating per turn. So the sooner we pick this up, probably the better. It does have some defensive values, and I would take a fair bit of damage if I try to conquer this, but as long as I can win, it might be worth doing, as long as the other players don't jump in on me while I am weakened. So we're going to move in this direction. I'm also going to go ahead and start exploiting my minions and get tribute. That's going to get me some resources in the form of souls, ichor, hellfire, or darkness, and we can spend this for many, many things in the game. From here, we can go ahead and end our turn, and what we should see happen is we are each going to take our own individual turns one at a time. I'm going to go first and move my armies, then it's going to be Belial, then Andromalius, and then Ursabet, and then Murmur, right? And then what will happen is who goes first is going to rotate every turn. This is 
extremely important because you need to pay attention to turn order. That can matter as far as when things are being executed to make sure your opponents don't mess you up, right? Very, very important to keep an eye on that. So now Belial is going to be the regent, he goes first and I go last, and so on. Alrighty, so my turn begins once again. We could issue an order to attack over here, but first I'm gonna move into this area to block off Murmur, hopefully, and then take a shot at this unholy fountain. Now normally there are things we'd be able to do to try to buff up our armies, right? We would be able to devise some stratagems or attach a Praetor or an artifact in order to boost up our strength. And there are three different attack phases in the game, We've got Range, Melee, and Infernal. We'll talk about this later on. I'm very good at Infernal, but that's kind of it. I will definitely take damage when I fight this fountain. Now, we should have some Tribute. Let's go ahead and see what I can get. I can select two tokens. I will take both of these since they have the highest value, so that's fine. We've received a demand already from Andromelius. Okay, um, he wants some of my tokens. If we do not do this, he will declare a vendetta against us, and we will be at war. I'm gonna accept this risk though. We will reject your demands. I am not going to concede to you this quickly. So he might start moving his armies toward me. But the thing is, while he's very strong in the melee phase, I'm stronger than him in everything else. So we would take some damage, but it is totally possible that I could theoretically defeat him. We've also received a message from him, from the celestial hand of Andromalius. However you say that, I'm sorry, I do struggle. Atop the Tower of Pride, join me up here, my dove. The view is breathtaking. My Praetors will feed you spiders and lizards and scrub away the turds beneath your perch. Wow, that is some colorful language. Okay, you sure do know how to win a girl. Can I buy anything useful yet at the bazaar that would give me an edge? I cannot afford anything except for some pieces of a manuscript, which doesn't excite me that much. Am I able to maybe build up the power of my character? Yeah, so there are five different magical powers in this game. We have Wrath, Deceit, Prophecy, Destruction, and Charisma. And each of these can unlock various different actions for your characters, which can be strong. They can also unlock better rituals and so on. We're supposed to be really good at prophecy. That's my thing. So we can peer into scrying bulls to glean my chance of success while attempting to perform rituals against other players. Plus, we have a few other things. Reveal the target's weakest powers. Temporarily increase your destruction resistance and grant me re prestige whenever someone tries to attack me. Yeah, with prophecy, we can react to them. We know what they're going to do before they do it. Is there anything here that would make a huge difference for me, though? We could do some charisma schemes if I go down charisma over here. There's also going to be things like deceit, and we can possibly loot the vaults of other players. Okay... Other alternatives might be to try to spend some prestige to rank up to a Marquis, a Duchess, and then a Princess of Hell. But I don't think that's quite what I'm looking for. We can make some demands of other players, but since we're already reacting to one, I'm not sure that's going to be the wisest course of action. Yeah, what kind of rituals can I undertake that might make a big difference here? Mostly we can resist different forms of magic. And also the contents of a vault. Ugh. We might need to do that in order to figure out who has the objects I need to win the game. Maybe the best thing to do for now is just continue collecting some tribute to get more resources. I think that might be true. Let's go ahead and just move on. So Belial gets to go first. He did nothing as far as movement, so Ursa Bet gets to go now. Looks like she's moving toward the Wood of Suicides. She might be going for a place of power of her own. Murmur is also moving in this direction, and he's going to block me from going where I wanted to go. Well, that's unfortunate because it's going to stop my army from going at all, so we've just effectively forfeited a turn. I do not like that at all. Let's think about that, though. Maybe it's going to be a blessing in disguise. If you decide to attack the Unholy Fountain, you will do damage to it, and then I can take it myself because you won't be able to take it in one turn. So maybe the correct play then is this is fine. We'll let him move first, then I will follow up because I am second in the turn order, and I can take this and you get nothing. That would be fun. I do think it might be worth grabbing this alien god in a bottle. This is an artifact of pride. It's gonna cost me some resources. If I wanna place a bid, we can auto-select some tokens here, some of the different tributes that I have received, and hopefully meet the cost here. As long as no one else makes a bid that beats me, then we should get this item. 
This is something we'll be able to stash in our stronghold to get some extra prestige generation per turn. So, we'll end this turn and let's see what's gonna happen. Ursabet is attacking the Wood of Suicide. So the way that this is gonna work is it's gonna first deal with the ranged phase, of which both characters had zero strength, so nothing happens. Both characters then move on to the melee phase. Once again, it's eight versus eight. That's a stalemate, which means no one takes any damage. But this last phase, they've got five infernal versus zero which means they do five damage to the Wood of Suicides. Not enough to take it, but enough to obviously weaken it. And sure enough, Murmur is gonna do the same thing over here. He's going to attack the Unholy Fountain. He'll take two damage this time because they had better ranged. They're going to be even on melee, and then he will win in the Infernal Phase and do four damage, which is exactly what just happened. Perfect, all right, that seems pretty good for you, doesn't it? Except now it's my turn. So I get to go next, and in this ranged phase, it's four versus two, so I will do two damage. Then I will take three damage in the melee phase, and then I will do six damage in the infernal. This fountain is mine. Perfect. Just like so. Thank you, Murmur. You just made my life a little bit easier. Don't feel too bad, all right? This is hell. We are not meant to be friends here. So, are we going to be going to war against the angel? Maybe. Vault rots. Oh good, I lost some of my tokens. <laughs> well, that makes me feel very happy with that. Mm-hmm, sure, great. Oh. Well, this sucks. It looks like, um, in Retribution, the angel is demanding that I send a champion to fight in the arena of the Conclave. I don't have any Praetors, which means there's really nothing I can do here. So we're going to forfeit and lose some prestige. That sucks. Well, let's go to our stronghold and we will up transfer over an artifact of pride and go ahead and get some destruction resistance and also some prestige. So that's one thing. And then we can start getting our tokens back. Because if I am unable to get some tokens to get a Praetor, um, the angel can keep doing that to me. Yeah, notice here, I've now lost a lot of prestige. And Dromalius now has it because I had to forfeit and I looked like a fool in front of the Conclave. That is not good. Now Murmur is making some demands of me and I'm going to have to reject him too. He seems a little angry that I took this from him. But if he wants to fight, uh, I, can, I can definitely do some serious damage to him unless he's got a trick up his sleeve, which he might. Let's go for double tribute this time. I seriously need these tokens. I'm not even kidding. I need, need, need these tokens to get a Praetor. I do not want a repeat of that incident. Is Belial about to steal this from Ursa Bet? I think he is. Oh, you sneaky, sneaky little thief. And as a result, he has a ton of prestige. And somehow, I don't know what just happened, but Andromalius just lost almost all his prestige. Oh, he upgraded to a Marquis. He spent all of it to get a higher rank, which means he has more votes in the council. Yeah, that's not a bad play on his part. That makes perfect sense. Now I can afford a Praetor. All right, what do I want? We could demand the melee phase go first. That's terrible for me. Then there's Dark Marshal. More tribute tokens to offerings if attached to a place of power. Could be good. But I think this is a better character for me right now, not to mention a little cheaper. We need a Praetor, so I will take this guy. It's gonna cost me a lot of tokens. It's also not the most efficient in terms of my Iker, but it's gonna be what it's gonna be in order to try and buy this character. Another demand here, huh? Right, so everyone is making demands of me now. Hmm. Well, this time I actually should be able to fight him off, I hope. Are there any plots that I wanna take? Some special schemes that would possibly allow me to get some extra prestige? Certainly a thought. What is this, by the way? Great Unholy Crusade. Every Archfiend may select a Legion to send to war against Heaven. Any Legions that return are showered with glory and receive a promotion. Wow. I'm able to make these decisions because I'm currently the Regent, which means I'm able to uh, decide what kind of actions the Conclave is going to take. What I really want to do is probably upgrade my Prophecy. I want to get to level 4 as fast as possible. When you get to level 4 in one of these skills, you're able to take another action. And obviously getting more actions is kind of huge. It gives you a massive advantage over all of your opponents. So let's go ahead and end that turn, see what happens. Looks like you are gonna kill one of these Abyss Striders, a neutral enemy, that's fine. And Murmur, for his part, appears to be running away at least a bit. Nope, he wants to fight an Abyss Strider as well. 
That's fine, you're about to take three damage, and you tried to set up a vendetta against me. So either you accept that you cannot fight me, or I'm gonna run in and kill you next turn. What is happening now? The winds of discord. The, pr <laughs> the Tower of Pride has risen up against Andromalius. He doesn't hold this thing anymore. Oh, that's funny. All right, well, it looks like uh, Murmur has decided to attack me. He must destroy one of my legions in eight turns. That is an interesting choice, sir. Um, all right. What we are gonna do is attach my Praetor onto this army, right? So Barbatos over here, which boosts up my range strength even further. So that's gonna take one of my actions. And then we could try to move in here and kind of force him to respond to me. The problem is he's got an advantage where he is ahead of me in turn order most of the time. So Murmur is actually one of the most dangerous characters for me right now. Uh, oh boy. Um, I'm not sure if I want to move or let him come to me. I think we try moving and see if maybe we can draw him into a bad fight. And actually, did Andromalius lose his Praetor in the tower? I think he did. Interesting. Uh, someone just corrupted my tribute. Well, that's very mean of them. Yeah, maybe now's a good time to make some demands and try to do a duel, and he can not show up for the fight this time. Oh, we have to submit a champion. Never mind, this is still in effect. Okay, a point to Praetor. He's got a strong one here. This might be a bit of a difficult fight, but we've got to try. So, um, yeah, we'll send this guy into a duel. There are several different abilities that we can choose from, and uh, depending on what happens here, uh, might be kind of difficult to beat him. Looks like I do get to go on the offense, though. Perfect, I should be able to finish him off with my range attacks. Say goodbye to your army, Murmur. <laughs> so after finishing these battles, my army can promote. More range in Infernal, Melee in Infernal, or lots of Infernal. Ugh, it's kind of hard to say which one's going to be the best for us. I don't like having no melee. I really don't. But I think that just kind of buckling down on range and Infernal may not be a bad way to go. In theory, on both of these phases, we do a buttload of damage. We just have to be careful not to go up against an enemy that can one-shot me in the melee phase. Now, what are some things I want to do? Well, I do want to increase my rank to the Marquis. This means I'll get more votes, and it also means I get better tribute. And having better tribute just opens up more options for me. Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and do tribute. And then as far as the duel, I'm really not sure if we can win this or not. The way I think this works is you have three different types of attacks that counter each other, I think in a rock, paper, scissors style. So this character has two orbs, which would beat my shielding abilities. But if he were to, I could then try using this ability, Feral Lunge, to counter them, but that may not work. He might anticipate I'm gonna do that, in which case he counters it with a parry of his own and he wins. Ah, uh, what's gonna be best here? That's a great question. We could go for a Veil of Smoke and hope for the best. Doesn't do as much damage, but even if we lose the duel, we are not banished. Which means I don't lose my character, we just lose prestige. This might be the safer way to go, even though it could be a little bit cowardly. They clash in the arena and they both die! Oh! Great, okay. We tied and did five damage each. Mm-hmm. All right, so there we go. Does that mean you lost your Praetor, but I did not lose mine? I'm hoping that's how that worked. It is how that worked. I've still got my character, and you lost yours. <laughs> oh, we have an edict to vote for. Okay, I've got two votes, thankfully, since I just upgraded. Uh, a character will have an infestation of Abyss Striders in their territory. Hmm. Um, I vote for Ursa Bet. And in the next turn, it looks like no one moved and did pretty much anything. I'm doing pretty good in prestige. I should be generating like a few more per turn than Belial is. So I'll catch up to him in time, though that might mean he feels inclined to attack me at some point. The Conclave vaguely remembers a time ago when great armies clashed. When they're reminiscing last, they reward feats of combat with more prestige. So for the next five turns, combat is exceptionally valuable. And it looks like Urzabed did get the Abyss Striders. <laughs> you know what that means? 
It's a great time to bully Ursa Betts. I'm gonna make a demand of her that costs me one of my actions. It also uh, wagers some of my prestige, but she either gives me tokens, in which case it was worth it, and I get prestige out of the arrangement, or we go to war, and as long as I can win that war, that's worth it. We've also got a fair bit more tokens. Can I get to level four? No, I need more hellfire and darkness. So we have to keep fishing for more tokens. I really, really want to get up to level four first. It's so important I do that, because then I really will be able to get so much gas compared to my opponents. Ha, huh, Urzabet actually accepted my demands. She just gave me a bunch of stuff. That is all I need to get up to rank four of Prophecy. This is gonna unlock more stuff, better auguries and such, so we can figure out everything that these characters have. Plus, we can discard my own active schemes. We can figure out, ooh, we can do Grand Prophecy schemes. All right, so this might be great for our plotting. Ah, but darn it, there's one problem with this. So Hell has some rules. You can only pay up to eight tokens in order to buy something, and this is kind of expensive. That means the only way this is gonna work is if we actually consolidate some tokens, and that's a whole nother action in and of itself, which really sucks. So I have to spend a turn first getting, let's say, some souls together like this and some of the Hellfire, and then some of the Darkness, and so on. We don't have to consult all of this, but this will make a 666 token, which seems appropriate. And that will pay for most of the costs, and then we'll just fill out the rest with other tokens. So, okay. Worth it, but it's gonna take a whole nother turn to get this online. Now, in this turn, we should be able to do this, get this thing paid for. That's a little bit more in our Hellfire than I was expecting, but it's the only way to make it work, and it's totally worth it. All right, level four, here we come. Third action. And I think it might be worth grabbing another one of these Praetors, not only for dueling purposes, but also I could attach this character to my place of power and get even more tribute options, which might be worthwhile. Another idea might be to go for a uh, pretty strong Praetor here and then try to get another Legion, have a second army able to run around. And I would like that, but I don't think that's gonna work for me. I think we need to get as many of these tokens as possible. Let's go ahead and buy another Praetor. So let's attach that Praetor over here. So now we can have more options there. And yes, three actions, there we go. That's huge. And maybe we can do a Dark Augury? I would like to find out what is going on in, let's say, Murmur's territory. What is he currently hiding in there? The ritual was successful, good. But unfortunately, some sort of event just knocked out all rituals. So even though it was successful, I don't get to see anything. Oh, well, thanks for that, cool. I'm gonna buy myself a second army over here because some people are starting to make demands of me again. The reason I'm gonna do that is because um, if you have an army adjacent to another army or item that's being attacked, they're actually going to share half of their stats between each other. And if Ursabet wants to attack me, that's fine. I can bring these guys along, and as long as they're entrenched over here, if she tries to attack, she will most certainly die. Okay, so Ursabet is coming to attack me. We're gonna find out if my stratagem works, because I got this army here just in time. 11 versus two. I do get to take out their entire army before they get to the next phase. Oh, thank God, that could have been a disaster for me. Something I really wanna buy is this book right here. An extra order slot just by having this item? I can't place a bid on it right now, but I could consolidate some tokens and get it next turn. And I think for an extra action, that has to be well worth it. Would it make a lot of sense to upgrade the next rank to a Duchess? I could do that. Gives me even better ranks, not to mention more tokens and so on. It cost me a lot of my prestige, which is risky, but I think it's still early enough in the game that we can do that. It doesn't look like it did an absolute ton for me, if I'm honest. It mostly seems to have just given me even more. Ah, take that back. Now we can get four tokens instead of three. Okay, yeah, this was totally worth it. Oh, somebody just cast a ritual and blew up Belial's army. Oh, that sucks. One thing that's really annoying, unfortunately, is uh, my opponents cast a spell which made me lose my unholy fountain, and getting it back is pretty bit tough. Oh good, you destroyed my destruction spell, and a lot of other people lost their skills too. Cool, thanks. It's fine though, we'll just summon a new Praetor. We should be able to run in here and snag this one with my third new shiny army, the Accursed Company. A 
whole reason I wanted that was so I could transfer back over this and get that extra order slot. Seriously, this is gonna be so good. It's just unfortunate that I had to take so long to get it. So can we finally do this um, augury again this time? Is someone gonna interrupt it again? I really hope not. Murmur, what do you got? Okay, in your vault, we see that you've got a handful of resources. Nothing extraordinary. Paperwork restructure, a veil of smoke, unbreakable stance. You got some manuscript items, but do you have what I'm looking for? It doesn't look like you do. Interesting. So if you don't have the artifacts I want, who does? Or a bet, probably. Wait, how did this happen? Murmur, it appears, is the Blood Lord of Ursabet? How? How did you do that? Got no idea. Well, let's do another Dark Augury on Ursabet anyway. Um, I may have to find a way to break her away from Murmur, but we should be able to figure out what she's got. And in your vault, aha! She has the Devourer Statuettes. Okay, so she definitely has one of the objects I need to win the game. Whoa, what the heck just appeared over here? Is it a freaking demon kaiju? It's a leviathan. Oh no. We will attempt to cast down one place of power per archfiend, returning them to a neutral state. There is no such thing as surrender. Ah! It's got 13, 11, 23 Jesus, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, who's gonna get smote first? Um, looks like he's heading down south. He might be heading toward me. Uh, I may need to consider getting the book the heck out of here. Yeah, I think he's heading for me. I need I need to evacuate the book next turn. Yep, go ahead and move this to the vault. Thank you. Yep, Kaiju is coming for me. Okay, we can try to defend this as much as possible, but this is a losing battle and we all know it. Wow. Okay, yep. Um, why don't we elect this guy for ruler of hell? You know, maybe this Leviathan is a blessing. I'm gonna follow him around and snag all these places of power as they become available. <laughs> Let him do all the dirty work, it's fine. Maybe I'll actually try becoming a princess of hell, just so I can get maximum value for everything from here on out. More uh, tokens, more votes, more whatever else. Um, I still need to destroy the Tower of Pride and I still need to find things. The thing is, I don't know when the election is going to happen. So, it's kind of important that I still have a lot of prestige when that does happen. Oh. Okay. And someone just straight out destroyed one of my really good com- Well, that's mean. Okay. Um, I don't know why that happens, but okay. We can get up to level four in Deceit. Ah, but I don't have enough tokens consolidated. Hang on, we can do that. The idea being... I can steal artifacts once I know where they are. And I've got my suspicions already. This might be a great way for me to get my stuff without having to uh, actually go to war. And if I can get up to level four here, I'll get a fifth action. Now that's huge. Let's try pilfering an artifact. Urzabet, Devourer Statuettes. Um, unreliable suggestion. The success is likely might get detected. I'm okay with that possibility. But if we want to increase our odds, what if we first did, what is it, Baleful Gaze? Sure, a bonus to future rituals. Do that here. And then we try pilfering the artifact and hopefully it ends up being a fair bit stronger. I think that's how this works. Yes, ritual successful. Okay, I should have what I'm looking for. So I've got the artifact, what does it do? Um, bottomless hunger, bound to your will for as long as you can pay its upkeep. It's a ritual. Really? Hang on. Yeah, sure enough. Question is, do I need this? Do I benefit from it at all? I don't know about that. We're gonna go ahead and lay siege to the Tower of Pride. Should be able to take this down pretty quickly. We'll take some damage in the process. That's fine in the melee phase, but it shouldn't be enough to kill us. And then we can go ahead and take this sucker down. Aha, and I've also pilfered the, what was it? The Goblet of the Traitor from uh, the Andromeda guy as well. That means I think I'm only missing a puzzle cube and then we just need to like win the game, which I'm currently doing, albeit it's closer than I would like. So who has the puzzle cube? Uh-oh. Turn 50, that means that the assembly has begun. We have 10 turns left before they are gonna choose the winner of the game. 
So we need to make sure we keep our prestige nice and high, but that also really puts me on the timetable to find those dang cubes. And also, how do I destroy the Tower of Pride? So now that we have the Tower of Pride, uh, I think the next thing we are supposed to do is we summon the Devourer, which I've got here. It does cost a bit, but I must control a stronghold or a place of power adjacent to the target. Uh, I don't have enough tribute. Darn it. All right, well, that's something we need to do, and soon. Oh, this looks promising. Ooh. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Yes, <laughs> I've got a new toy. So what can this sucker do? Because I need it to... Wait a minute. So it looks to me like I have to devour the Tower of Pride. But if I already control it, it probably doesn't work. Oh. Okay, so I should not have taken this then. I need to attack it with the Devourer. Well, that's a little unfortunate, but okay. I guess I need to reload a previous game and we'll try this in a different order. Okay, we're back to turn 50. This actually took a lot of finagling and weirdly enough, Murmur asked to be my vassal. I'm not really sure why he did that, but he did. Now, I'm able to actually get the Devourer in position to attack this as of next turn, though this is still fraught with peril. Since we do still have, um, you know, a beast running around and causing issues. <laughs> Alright, so Devourer, now's when you're gonna do your job, right? Destroy the Tower of Pride permanently? Give it a big ol' chompy chomp? Or, you know, vomit all over it. I mean, you know, yeah. Acid. That that works? Sure. Dissolve it. I don't mind. And there it goes. Like a bunch of chopped carrots. Cool. Belial sends a new message. Uh, my next audience promises to be much more entertaining. Well, that's great. Does anyone tell me- Can you tell me where the freaking Rubik's Cube is? Because that is the only thing I need, right? Hold on. Uh, history, blah blah blah, ongoing. There we go. Okay, so, destroy the tower. I've got the goblet, I've got the statuettes, I just need the puzzle cube, but no one can tell me where it is. All right, let's 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 try getting up to level five with Prophecy. So we have Dark Augury level five. Um, I don't suppose this is being like hidden in some random, not a stronghold, but like a random uh, point of interest, is it? Surely you guys wouldn't have done that. Finally, I get a spy off in Belial's base. God, I hope you have it. No, it doesn't say that you have it. For God's sake, where is it? And the answer is it's nowhere. No, seriously, it's actually gone from the game. Let me explain. I got a bit frustrated because I spent a fair bit of time making sure that I had not left any stone left unturned before I reached out to the devs and said, hey, am I missing something really important? And they took a look at my save file and got back to me and said, oh, yeah, it sure looks like one of those random events destroyed the item permanently from the game. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> so they have uh, since fixed the scenario, so that can't happen again, and they gave me an updated save file where they kind of brought it into the bazaar. Now I'm just gonna buy it. This is not how it's supposed to be, but at least the devs were very quick to respond to this. I gotta say, kudos to them. They solved the problem really quickly, but I want to make sure that I actually do end this. It should have been in Murmur's possession. All right, not Belial, Murmurs should have had it. I actually could have had this several turns ago. So we'll just say, whoopsies, good thing we tested that ahead of time. Thank you devs for getting it fixed. And I'm glad that's not gonna be an issue going forward. Now we're gonna get the puzzle cube and then I can end the game properly. And now the Conclave finally meets to reveal the identity of the new dark majesty of hell. It is of course, Lilith. The mother of all hell, only appropriate, I think, with Murmur as my loyal, though very unprestigious vassal. And thus concludes one of many chronicles in the game. I don't let the ending fool you, this is actually quite a lot of fun. <laughs> I actually do think this game is phenomenal in so many ways, and I tell you what, it is so good in multiplayer in particular. But we're gonna cover that later on when the game does release on February 22nd, so make sure you tune in on that day and I'll show you how that's going to work as you backstab your friends in a mad scramble to rule hell. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you are excited about the upcoming release. Make sure that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.